So we continue with sociology A level. Uh, we have Marxism. So for Marxism, for Marxist, Marx, for Marxist, work is the most important activity in any society because no other activity or social activity like politics, family, can exist without people first having found a way to survive. So according to Marxist, the most important thing about in life is the work life. Without the work life, we cannot survive because with work, that is when we earn. That is what he's saying. As a result of that, does our work is socially organized? Does it? Uh, who does it? What they do and who benefits from it is the key to understanding how all, those, all other social relationships are organized. Marxists refer to a relationship between base and superstructure. By this, they mean the relationship between economic, political, and ideological institutions, which they claim is the basis for social order and control. For Marxists, their point is, for social control, it's it's linked to the work life. So the capitalists, they ensure that the work puts the working class in a way that they continue to be the working class. So everything is arranged, is structured. So social order or social control is already, is already in place because the workplace, based on the fact that our survival depends on the workplace, so whatever the workplace wants us to do, we get them done. So that means capitalists still decide social control in the society. So we go on. They said, uh, the economic base is the basis of foundation on which society is built. It is the world of work and involves particular types of relationships, relations of production, such as owner, manager, wage laborer, and organization. The capitalist workplace is organized in order, one, in order, one group above another. Do, those further up in the other hierarchy have more power and control than those lower down. I just explained that anyway. So the workplace, because that is how that is our survival, that's our basis for survival. So the workplace has the owners, the leaders, the workers, so everything is in place. So whatever we do in real life, based on Marxists, always, always happens between, within the workplace. So that's for the economic life, so which is relations to production. So production is about goods and services, which comes from the work. So from the work, we have the managers that we have to follow, that has to give us what to do, what not to do. We have our, the owners of the business. We as employees, we have our own class there too. So whatever we do, it's already in place and we just have to follow suit. Then the political and ideological superstructure rests on the economic base and involvement involves political institutions such as government, agencies of social control, which are the police, the judges and the court, and the ideological institutions like religious, mass media and education. So for the political and ideological structures, these are based on religion, based on education, the police, the government. But for the economical aspect of it, which controls, we, you know, for social control, we have the economical aspect and we have the social, the political aspect. For the economical aspect, it is done from the workplace. And for the, for the political and ideological aspect, which talks about how the society is being governed, it's through the politics, yeah, the judges, government, religion also, religion also takes part. That's why they said earlier, we talked about constitutions being drafted from the books of Muslims or yeah, Christians. So we go down. So the political and ideological superstructure, these are, we have the government, the executive arms of government, which is the police. We have, we have the government. We have the executive arm of the government, which is police. We have the judicial, uh, the legislative arm of government. We have the judiciary part of the government, which are the courts, the lawyers, and we have religion, which talk, which is the basis of our belief. We have the mass media through radio, television, and we have education, which is school. So all these are political and ideological superstructure. So the relationship between these base, the workplace is a key area of conflict because of its organizational structure. In capitalist society, this means of economic production, the tools, the factories, the machines that are used to create work are owned by one class, the bourgeoisies. We call them the bourgeoisies. Mm -hmm. The bourgeoisies are the owners of capital. Mm -hmm. they, they are the, no, they are the owners of capital. They are the, capital, they are the, they are the ruling class. Yeah. We call them the bourgeoisies. Mm -hmm. So, the majority owns little or nothing and so are forced to sell their ability to work. This ability is known as the, their labor power. It is part of the, what Marxists call the forces of production. Our labor power is organized to produce wealth by attaching it to various forms of technology, from simple tools to advanced machinery. So we have the bourgeoisies who controls, they have all the assets, land, capital, they control the society. Mm -hmm. And for we workers, we only have 
the labor power. That is what we sell to get the minimum that they will pay us. That is the point they are making there. So in the capitalist society, members of, uh, members of a small bourgeoisie class become very rich because they, they keep the profit made from goods and services and most people own nothing but the ability to work for wages. So the capitalist society does not allow you to own assets if you are part of the working class. Mm -hmm. So either you are a small bourgeoisie or you are a big one, you continue to own more assets because the, the, the working class we have a name for the working class. When I remember, I'll tell you. The working class are called. Uh, I forgot. When I remember, I'll tell you anyway. So for the working class, they don't have power. They don't have the financial capability to own assets. The only power they have is their wages. Yeah. So it means they have to work before they earn. And who are they working for? They are working for the right. capitalist. Yeah. And you can't be richer than your owner. You can't be richer than your employer. True. So that's the point there. So. So the emphasis on, on conflict suggests that capitalist societies are naturally weak and un unstable. However, this is not the case. This is not the case. For Marxists, they argue that the ruling class is not only economically powerful but also politically powerful. So, according to Marxists, mm -hmm. Marxists they believe that they are, the bourgeoisie are not just economically powerful; they are politically powerful because mm -hmm. power intoxicates power. Yes. So when we say power intoxicates power, it means Absolute power corrupts absolutely. So when you have economic, when you have political power, it allows you to have economic power. Yes. And if you have economic yes. power, power, you can have political power. So both of them intoxicate each other. Mm -hmm. That's the point, according to Marxist. So it controls what Althusser called repressive state apparatuses, or ways of getting people to conform to, to the by force. This can range from hard policing, the police and the armed forces as agents of social control, to soft policing social workers and welfare agencies policing the behavior of the lower classes. So there's conformity that the, worker, the, work, uh, the capitalists want. They want, according to Marxist, social control in the capitalist society is already stated and written by the capitalist. Mm -hmm. So the capitalists will use police on you. They will threaten your life yeah. because they want you to do, they want you to yeah. act yeah. in a certain way, yeah. which is their own conformity. So they do that using police, and they can also use the soft, uh, the, the soft policing too, which means they use your supervisors, your managers to checkmate what you do. So either they use the executive arm of the government, or they use the office, the workplace, to conform you, to make you conform in society. That is what they say here, according to the Marxists. So conformity comes not based on individuals here. It's based on how the capitalists want it to be. So owners, ownership and control of institutions such as the media also allow the ruling class to influence how others see the world. Althusser uh, called these institutions th that, deal, that deal in idea, ideas, ideological state apparatuses. The education system, for example, does not just teach knowledge and skills. It also teaches the values of competition, individualism, which is education success, which is measured by how successful you can compete with others and respect of authority. All these ideas fit neatly into a capitalist economic system that most benefits the bourgeoisie. So, because the capitalists, they own property, they own everything. So they have the influence, they have influence on education, they have influence on the society. So the educational system, they are the ones that tell the principals, the teachers, what to teach the children of the, the working class. Mm -hmm. What not to teach them. What, to teach them. what they can attain. What level they can reach. Mm -hmm. So that means the society is already structured according to a way that it will be beneficial to the capitalist. So that is the point there. Do you get it? Yes. So that's why he said all these ideas fit neatly into a capitalist economic system that most benefit from the courage. Benefits the bourgeoisie. Everything that happens in the society is well structured and it is being structured based on the expectation of the capitalist. Mm -hmm. So, order and stability are maintained at the system level through the institution that make up the political and ideological superstructure, which is still controlled by the capitalist. Mm -hmm. So, these in turn are controlled by a ruling class, which I just said there, whose power comes from ownership of the economic base. Most people are fixed into capitalist society by the need to earn a living for themselves mm -hmm. and their family. They are also fixed in, in by a range of ideas that supports the current system, which are spread by media, education, religion, and other institutions. The capitalist society, they've influenced the religion, they've influenced the workplace, family. they've influenced the family, they've influenced institutions. So let me quickly talk about how they influence each, each 
agency of socialization for the family. They have the father, right? Yes. The capitalists, they ensure that the father make the children and the wife understand that they are the ones that feed them. They are the ones that make the living becomes easier for them. Yeah. So the father will act in a way that the capitalists want them to act at home. Mm -hmm. Do you get the point yeah. here? So you can't be a father when you cannot, when you cannot provide needs and want for your family. So because you need to provide the needs and want for your family, so whatever the capitalists want you to do, you get it done. Yes. So that's so they become they, they become weak. Yes. So they they are they are vulnerable to capitalists. Mm -hmm. That's family. For education, they are the owners of the school. So they own the school. They pay the wages of teachers. Yes. They pay the principals. So whatever they want, whatever results they want the working class to have is what they have. Yes. The religious society, they are the ones that build the churches. Mm -hmm. So. They have edge over the pastors or yeah. whoever is in charge. Mm -hmm. So whatever they want them to preach out is what they preach. Yes. So the religion aspect will teach how to conform, how to respect the capitalist society. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Yes. So socialization, therefore, is an effective form of control. A type of ideological control that seeks either to convince people that the interests of the ruling class are really the interests of everyone, or to present society as impossible for the individual to involve, to influence or change. You say what they said. They say socialization is a form of if, uh, it's an effective form of control. Mm -hmm. So the society is being influenced. The capitalists have influenced the society through other social agents like the family, the the educational, the workplace, mm -hmm. the religion aspect. They've influenced everything. Yeah. So they make us to see that the capitalists have our interests. So the interest of the capitalists is the interest of the people. Mm -hmm. That is what they preach. Yeah. So that means we just have to accept it. Without the capitalists, we don't have a life. That is the point they are making there. So that is why Marxists believe that there's always going to be a revolution. Mm -hmm. So in the last paragraph, earlier types of societies, uh, society are different types of stratification system that can be compared with class system. Stratification means different stages, like splitting them to different stages or different groups. For example, India has a caste system where social positions was ascribed at birth. There's ascribed and there is a prescribed. For ascribed, it means it becomes what you are being built for. Mm -hmm. It's as you are born, the family you become, you belong to. Ascribed positions are like the royal family. So because you are part, you are being born in the royal family, it is an ascribed position. So you inherit it from birth. Uh, that is what ascribed means. Okay. Do you get it? So that's what the point is. Said. Said people tend to accept the level of society that we are born into doing the same work and marrying someone from the same background. This allows very little social mobility. And uh, what is social mobility? Social mobility means you being able to move from one social ladder to another, mm -hmm. like from the working class to the middle class, from the middle class to the, uh, to the upper class or the willing class. That's what social mobility is. Do you understand what social mobility is? Mm -hmm. Okay. So the class system is more open with some mobility up and down the system. That's up the ladder. Do you understand? Any, any question about that? So, Based on Marxist, what we need to understand about Marxist for social control is that there's always conflict in the society because the capitalists influence every decision made. Yes. They've influenced the, the, they've influenced family, religion. education, institutions, religion. religion, the workplace. They've influenced yes. everything. So whatever these social agents are saying mm -hmm. is to the benefit of the working of uh, the, the capitalists or the bourgeoisies. Mm -hmm. Is it clear? Yes. So we go to the feminist theory on conformity. Although there are many forms of feminist theory, I told you we have the liberal, we yeah. have the radical, radical, so we check them anyway. Although there are many forms of feminist theory, they, are all, they all share the belief that contemporary societies are patriotic, patriarchal. And when we talk about patriarchal, it means a society that is made for men. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? Yes. To some degree. The interests of men are always considered more important than those of women. In basic terms, therefore, order and control are based on male power expressed in two ways. Interpersonal power, which refers to the physical final, violence, or various ways the female labor is exploited within the family group. Cultural power focuses on how male dominated societies are structured to oppress and exploit women in such societies. Men dominate the highest level of economical, political, and cultural institutions. So the society is patriarchal, according to the feminists, mm -hmm. because men can be physical and they can also use cultural aspects of it's to exploit women. That's the point they are making. So both economical, political, and cultural institutions mm -hmm. are aided by men, are dominated by men. 
So different types of femini feminism emphasize different forms of control as a way to understand a male-dominated social, social order. For the liberal feminist, I, I call it feminism or feminism anyway, but the, for the liberal feminist, the key form of control, control is gender discrimination. Mm -hmm. While for, fe for Marxist feminism, they, they see it as inequality, uh, for Marxist feminists, they see it as class inequality, which provides the context in which female oppression, exploitation, and discrimination occur. So for liberal feminists, what they see is that there's always gender discrimination. But for the Marxist feminists, they see it as class, class, uh, class inequality. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, the, the females are, are always below the when, they come, when it comes to position. That's how oh, they man. see it. Possession. Position, Position, yes. Oh, for the Marxists. You know, Marxists are about class. It's like a work and stuff. So that's for the Marxists. So that's the Marxist feminists anyway. So they say, in a competitive capitalist society, men are encouraged to exploit any weakness in women's market position. So the fact that women may be out of the workforce during, during and after pregnancy, for example, to their own advantage. So for Marxists, they believe women are always uh, vulnerable and exploited because of their weakness and because of their long absences. Yeah. Because they need to, you know, during pregnancy, yeah. they, don't, they are not always going to be there they and they need to take care of the child. Yeah. So, that present, that time that they are absent, is always the time for the men to exploit and take over whatever functions yeah. or responsibility of the women. Mm -hmm. So when the women come back, they have to, they have to, come, they have to start from the beginning again. Yeah. So that's according to the Marxists. Therefore, the radical feminists, what do they see? They see a patriarch, uh, they see a patriarchy society as a source of female oppression. So radical feminists believe that patriarchy is a feature of all non-human societies and result in men dominating the social order in two areas. The, pub the public, which is the workplace, where women are paid less and have lower status, and the private at home, where the women carry out the majority of the unpaid domestic work. Mm -hmm. So, for the radical ones, they are conflict people too. They don't, they are not like the liberal. For the liberal, they believe the society can become better mm -hmm. through different constitutions or different, different regulations. Changes. So that's for the liberal. For the Marxists, they believe the society puts males ahead of females in terms of class. Yes. For the radical, they believe everything, every aspect of the society is just patriarchal. So they don't see at home, they, feel, they believe that women will do unpaid jobs at home, they will still get less, despite having the same position at work with men. So that is how they see the society, mm -hmm. according to the radical feminists. I think the point is clear, okay? So we we'll go to interactionism. For interactionism, it's about uh, the micro, the micro aspect, which is individuals. So I'll be right back. So we'll continue with social conformity. So we're going to interactionism. Here, it's micro-sociological, which means individuals in the society. So individuals pull the string, according to interpretivists. So I'm going to read it anyway. This general micro-sociological approach, also called the social action approach, claims that Order and control are created from the bottom up. It is based on the idea that people create and create society on a daily basis through their de daily routines. People constantly, if not always, knowingly produce and reproduce social order through their individual and combined behavior. From this viewpoint, society is merely a term people use to explain the limits they place on behavior. Although society does not exist physically, it does exist mentally. It's in our mind. People act as though society is a real force having an effect on them limiting and controlling their behavior, this creates order and stability. So according to, through the micro-sociological perspective of social control or conformity, individuals are the ones that make the structure. So it means, for the, for the interpreter, interpreter, uh, interpretivist or the interactionist, they believe the society is being structured by people. So it is individuals that make these rules, it is individuals that make the laws, that we start following. But in the mind of our, in the mind of people, we think it is invisible. But it is not invisible. We are the ones that change the society. We are the ones that make these rules and regulations mm -hmm. that we need to follow. So, but the point is, we cannot see these things happening physically. Mm -hmm. But the way we are being molded or being made, you know, without this is a, this is a place where right? we're sitting down here. So let's take the human aspect of us out here. Nothing will be here left. Nothing will be left here. Mm -hmm. So, because based on the fact that nothing will be left here, it means individuals, people being here, allows this place to become a society. So physically, we are present. Mm -hmm. 
But in our mind, whatever we do right now, it's something that is moral, it's something that is written. We do, whatever we do here, we assume that it is part of what we should do. So, doing what is not expected of us, our conscience will definitely talk about like, oh, we're doing something that is wrong. Oh, we're not doing it right. Nobody's going to tell us that we're not doing it right. But in our mind, we know we're doing it wrong or not right. right. Mm -hmm. So that's why whatever happens, the control of our behavior is always in the mind. Yeah. It's always in our mind. So that's the point I'm making there. So because this control is in our mind, it brings about that order and stability. It is not created by the capitalist or the socialist or whoever. So it is in our mind. So because it's in our mind, we act according to it and society becomes a better place. Mm -hmm. So that is what they think about the, uh, the interactions. They believe the society is created by individuals. Mm -hmm. we, they, we create the society, we, we create it according to them and we follow those orders. So to understand how order is maintained, therefore we must examine the social psychological process through which social groups and a sense of society are constructed. From this perspective, Social life involves a series of encounters, separate, separate but linked episodes that give the appearance of order and stability. They exist for as long as we act in ways that maintain them. Gafikyo demonstrated the weak na nature of our beliefs about social order by disrupting people's daily routines and observing how upset, confused, and angry people became. Order is more psychological, desirable than disorder, and people try to impose order through the meanings given to behavior in two ways. One, to interact. People must develop shared definition of the situation in a school classroom if a teacher defines the situation as a period of time for teaching. But as students define it as a time for messing around and having fun, this will almost certainly result in disorder. So, according to interactionist, that social order we're talking about has to be created by us. So the first way to create it is to have a shared idea, a shared de definition. So whatever we are doing right now is both agreed by us that this is what it means. So it, we have divined it. We have, okay, we are having a class. So it has to be a class. Yeah. So the definition is, my own definition of a class should be the same definition of your own class. Mm -hmm. So that means with that, there's order. There's orderliness. Mm -hmm. So we don't need capitalists, we don't need feminists, we don't need, uh, we don't need Marxists to tell us how social order should go. Mm -hmm. It is we that define how our order, what our order should be. So make an example of the classroom. It's a, it's a school classroom. So the teacher sees it as the time to teach students. But the student sees it as the time to mess around. So messing around brings this orderliness. Yes. It doesn't make the class look good. That's why most of the time, even for me, it, I find it difficult to teach when the class is on messing. Talking. So you can't. It's difficult because you want to pass information and they are distracting. So there's going to be this order. So we have to have the same definition of order. We have to have the same definition of the situation mm -hmm. before order can be in charge, order can take place. So if we see it as a classroom, then we both have to agree that it's a classroom. Then if we don't see it as a classroom, then we both have to agree that it's not a classroom. Not you agreeing and me disagreeing. If you are agreeing and I'm disagreeing, there's going to be disorder. That's the first way. That's the interactive aspects mm -hmm. of social, social order. Then the second one, where meanings are negotiated, they can easily change. For example, the identities associated with masculinity and femininity have changed dramatically over the 30, past 30 years in many countries. So the second way is negotiation. Oh, we have to do it this way. We have to do it that way. Oh, for the next 20 minutes, I'm going to give you this time for yourself. Like I do in the class, give you five minutes yeah. for a break. That we negotiate yeah. before we, we go listen. into it. So that's negotiation. So sometimes we have social order to negotiation. So for the, with negotiation, it means we're going to reach compromise. We have to disagree to agree on things. Yeah. That's what negotiation is about. Is it clear? Yeah. So interactionist, argue that to explain human behavior, we need to study people's interaction at the micro level, at individual level, as they go about their daily lives. Because as Schultz argues, subjective meaning give rise to an apparently objective social world. Societies are constructed through social interaction, and this in turn is based on meanings. We live in a complex symbolic world in which the meaning of our actions, our choices of clothes, or the languages, or the language we use is always open to interpretation. The meaning of something, whether a physical object such as a mobile phone or a symbolic system such as language, is never completely clear. And its meaning, its meaning can be changed by the social context in which it appears and can be negotiated through interaction. So we give different meanings to things. 
And as a result of that, we need to always interact and we need to always negotiate. So for, so, for the interactionists, they believe that there's going to be social order through interaction and negotiation. Do you get it? Yes. So that's according to the interactionists. So it is seen as microsociological. So individuals bring social order in the society, not structuralists. They are different. Interactionists are different from structuralists. For structuralists, they see the society pulling the strings. For interactionists, which are interpretivists, they see individuals pulling the strings. So for individuals, for social control and social order to, to, to come into place, we need to interact and negotiate. Is it clear? Any question about that? So we move on. To understand how social context can determine To understand how social context can determine or change the meaning of something, consider two people fighting. If the fight occurs in the street, we might interpret this as unacceptable and call the police. If the two people were fighting in the boxing ring, rather than disapproving, we might share and encourage our favored fighter. You see, there are two situations here. The first situation, we see it as, we give meanings and context. It's about the society, the social context of the meaning we give to the situations. So the first situation is seen as, uh, is seen as violent. The second situation is seen as sport. Mm -hmm. Do you get it? But the first situation here mm -hmm. is seen as violent. Mm -hmm. The second situation is seen as sport. Yes. So it is about the meaning we give to it. But either way, they are both fighting. Yeah. Okay. One is fighting legally, and the other one is fighting illegally. So we could call the police for that. Mm -hmm. So that's the point they are making there. I think you understand. Yes. So why these examples demonstrate that meanings must While this example demonstrates that meaning must always be interpreted, it also suggests that interaction is based on shared definition of a situation, which they themselves may be the product of the negotiation. So social interaction, therefore, does not simply involve obeying rules without question, because the meaning of behavior can change depending on the social context. Wrong, 1961 criticized what he calls an over-socialized conception of man. He rejects the idea that human behavior is governed entirely by the effect of socialization. For wrong, people are able to exercise a degree of freedom from the influences of their social environment. So, for interpretivists, it's about we understanding that any situation we have, it is based on the definition we give to it. Mm -hmm. So, like the example they made earlier about two people fighting in the street, you call the police because it is seen as violent. Mm -hmm. Two people fighting in a ring, you share for your own, you support one because you, you see it as sport. Mm -hmm. So, whatever happens in situation, in, in societies, there are things that we can sit down, interact about, negotiate about. Mm -hmm. So that's the point they are making. Do we get it or not? So that means we can exercise our freedom. We are not restricted to things. So it means whatever we see, if we find out that it is not conducive for us, it's not, you know, it's not comfortable for us. We talk about it. We interact it. We we interact about it. We negotiate about it. Mm -hmm. So that's according to interpretivist or the interactionist. So, the idea of labeling demonstrates how interactionists view society as a product of social interaction. Labeling, the the labeling theory argues that when, when we name something, such as categorizing people as male or female, we associate the name with a set of characteristics that are then used to guide our behavior. These characteristics influence our behavior and attitude to the named person, object, or situation. If the meaning of something is only developed through interaction, the meanings can change. For example, male and female social identities have changed over the past 50 years. In Western societies, female identity has changed dramatically. Previously, a woman was defined almost exclusively in terms of marriage, motherhood, and caring for others. Today, there is a wide range of definitions, such as single career women, which reflects changing ideas about equality and perception of women. So, for according to interactionists, it is about our narratives. It's about how we see things, how we divine things. So, things can change because they are based on interaction, they are based on negotiation. So, whatever we negotiate for, it means we can still disagree and agree again. So for interactionists, the society is a, is a place that we can interact, negotiate, and put things in order. So that is according to them. Okay. I, it's, I think it's clear. Yes. So the perception, the perception we give to things, the meaning we give to things, is based on our own definition of things. So it is acceptable if I think you are a woman, and I, will, I, will think, you are, I, I think you are a woman because you portray certain characteristics of women. So these things are 
thoughts. These things are things I've seen and I've, you have accepted that you are a woman. So if I'm calling you a woman, it's because you have accepted that you are a woman. So if you're not a woman, then we negotiate it. That, oh, I can't do this. I'm unable to do this. I'm unable to do that. So I'm, not, I'm still not a woman. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Yeah. So the society is based on the meaning we give to things, our social context, negotiating it, divining it, interacting with it. Is it clear? Yes. So we'll go to structure, uh, structuration now. Continue with social conformity. So we'll go to structural relation. Concept of structure and actions are both important in helping us understand the relationship between society and the individual. Although we are all individuals, our behavior, choi our behavior choices are influenced, limited, and improved by the framework of rules and responsibilities, which is social structure that surrounds us. Just as we cannot imagine a society without the individuals, it is impossible to think about people without referring to the ways in which they be their behavior is structured. Giddings in 1984 developed a perspective called structuration, which outlines the importance of both structure and actions in considering the relationship between society and the individual. So for structuration, it simply talks about the relationship between people and the society they, they belong to. So it means we can't take the society out of the people, and we can't take the people yeah, out of the right. society. I think the point is clear there. So for structuration, it's, it's the idea that as people develop relationships, the rules they use to guide their behaviors are formalized into about routines, ways of behaving towards others, towards each other. Through the huge range of practices in our lives, a sense of structure develops in our social world, and this involves rules. So as soon as we start dealing with each other, as soon as we start having a relationship together, we start creating rules that becomes a formality. By knowing what I don't like, by knowing what you don't like, we start creating laws that guide those things that we don't like or those things that we like. Mm -hmm. They become formal. Yes. So you wouldn't want to do it to me because I don't like it and I wouldn't want to do it to you because you don't like it. Mm -hmm. Based on the fact that we already, uh, we already uh, we are able to finalize it, we are able to put it on, we are able to standardize it, mm -hmm. that these are the things we don't want. So the idea is important because it indicates the way our actions create behavioral rules and demonstrate how such rules become externalized. They seem to take on a life of their own, separate from our individual behaviors. Thus, although we may show rule-making behavior, these rules reflect back reflexivity on our behavior in ways that suggest or demand conformity. So, like I said, we know what we want, we know the do's and the don'ts. So, we, work, we act according to the do's and the don'ts because we already know it and it's stated. So, whatever we do, it becomes a norm to conform. We don't, do, we don't go beyond that. Because when we go beyond that, that means we are, we, we become, we are not conform, we become non-conformed. Mm -hmm. So it means uh, you know the rules and you're not following the rules. Uh, coming to the class and say, oh, you don't make noise in my classroom. With, based on our interaction, we already know that we negotiated it and everything is fine. Mm -hmm. So you don't make noise. As soon as you start making noise, then you are not conforming. Mm -hmm. So conformity comes based on the fact that we have created relationships. And we, through, through that relationship, we are able to create rules regulations that we act on. Mm -hmm. So, in explaining why some rules are created and accepted, why others are rejected, Giddens uses the idea of social resources and power relationships. Some rules are negotiated, French, uh, negotiated like friendship, for example, is based on a series of unwritten and unspoken rules that develop over time. Other rules, such as laws or government punishments for murder, cannot be negotiated. They are simply forced on individuals by powerful groups. So, Rules, there are rules that can be negotiated and there are some that cannot be ne that, are, that you cannot negotiate. Mm -hmm. They are especially for public laws, we call them public laws. These things they need execution. So we don't we don't so we don't dwell with it, we don't compromise it. Mm -hmm. But for friendship, like I said, we have developed a relationship. Based on the relationship we've developed, we negotiate how we want to behave. Mm -hmm. We negotiate how we want to deal with each other. Mm -hmm. So we formalize it based on the fact that we have both agreed on this. These are negotiable. But when it comes to rules that govern the society, it has to be forced on people. Because if one person doesn't do it well or does not conform, it brings harm to the third party. Mm -hmm. So those ones are not negotiable. So that ends conformity to interactionism, to Marxism, to feminism, mm -hmm. and right. structuralism. Okay. Is it clear? Yes. Any question about it? Good. So we're going to factors explaining why individuals conform to social expectations. Sanction, true sanctions, social pressure, self-interest, and social exchange in the next class.